Hey guys, what's up? Today I am doing furring strips in the van. And imagine uh, a house that you're building and it would have studs and then on all the studs you would put sheetrock. Well, the furring strips are kind of like those studs in a house uh, for your van. So what I'm using is half inch um, Baltic birch plywood. The reason I'm using plywood is that it's um, very stable through different weather conditions, especially, especially the Baltic birch. Um, it's got a lot more layers. It also uses a marine grade adhesive in between the layers. And so it's a good option for um, these furring strips. If you use like pine, it can very easily twist and split. Um, it, but the, um, the Baltic birch plywood is a lot less resistant to doing that. The reason I'm using half inch is that it's a little bit flexible so I can bend it to the curves of the van um, in places where I want to. Now there are some places I don't want to have it bend, um, but like on the ceiling in my last van, I did it straight across. And there's a couple of ways that you can do your, uh, your furring strips. A lot of people will just do it right across the bottom um, at the lowest point. So line like a piece up with this low point on both sides, which would be about here um, on both sides. And then put a straight furring strip across. You lose about another inch, inch and a half by doing that. And because of the ceiling, I'm gonna be doing um, slats of wood with a little gap in between. It'll conform to this um, curve. If you're doing tongue and groove, same thing. It'll conform to this slight curve. So you kind of decide, need to decide if you wanna do it straight or curved. Um, but I'm gonna do a curve just to give another inch, inch and a half of, of space. Uh, to the ceiling. So the way that I'm going to attach these is with um, riv nuts. Riv nuts plus nuts. They're similar, a little bit different. I'm using the riv nuts. Um, you can use self-tapping screws, um, but the the riv nuts are, or plus nuts are just a little bit more, um, a little bit stronger. Use a little bit bigger bolts, and so that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm also going to be using uh, adhesive, a marine grade adhesive. I really like the Loctite marine adhesive. It's more expensive than normal uh, construction adhesive, but because of the extreme heat and cold that you're going to have um, and um, possibility for moisture, I, I think it's worth it to use the marine grade adhesive. It's only going to be a couple of tubes, so they're about 11 or $12 each as opposed to maybe 4 or $5 for normal adhe construction adhesive. So I think it's money well spent. So what I've done, I'm going to take this off and just show you is I made a template with this first piece. And I definitely want to have a really strong rib nut right in the center so that it pulls this piece. You see, if I just laid this piece flat, it would be like this, but I wanted to pull it up against that. So I want to have one rib nut there. So I put the first one in and then I drilled this out. Um, I'm countersinking these bolts just a little bit so that they will lie flush and so my ceiling um, won't, you know, the, the bolt won't be in the way. So I'm just countersinking it with one of these bits and I'm doing it just deep enough so that uh, the bolt sits flush and large enough so that my washer will fit in. I'm using, I'm using quarter um, by one inch bolts with a um, washer and I think a three quarter inch bit will make that hole just perfect. So what I did is I first put that center one in and then screw it up in so that the, the piece is the way it's gonna be. Then I lined it up, just centered on this, on this um, beam. And then I marked where the hole is that I'm gonna use the plus nut. And there's several holes, and I actually did this one first, that's why I have two holes, but I realized it was too big for my plus nut. So I used the one next to it and just had to drill it out a little bit, and I'll show you how I do that. Um, but I lined those up and then I drilled out these holes, put the plus nuts in, and that'll allow me to mount this. But now, I'm, now that I have this one just right and I can test it and just make sure, just make sure that these will go in. That one screws in and that one screws in. There we go. So I know that those are in exactly the right spot. You want to make sure that this is pulled up tight when you do it, because when you pull it tight, 
and it bows, these are gonna move in just slightly. So make sure you pull this up tight and then go ahead and mark the holes. So now that I have this, I need to make one, two, three, four more for the other beams in the van. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down and do that now. The first thing that I did is I cut a strip of plywood with using my track saw that was wide enough for me to cut the four slats out of. Then I cut it down to length on my miter saw using the first one as a um, template and it was 54 inches. Then I moved over to the table saw and set my fence using that first one as a template and I cut the four pieces down to two and a half inches each. Next, I use that template to mark the holes where I'm going to drill, and I just clamped the pieces together to make sure that I got the holes in exactly the right spot. Next, I moved over to my drill press, and I, using that bit, three-quarter inch bit, I drilled out the um, space for the bolt and the washer to sit in, and I drilled those, like I said, just deep enough so that uh, the head would be flush with the top of the board. If you don't have a drill press, you can just do this with a hand drill. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit so that the hole would be a little bit bigger than the bolts, the quarter inch bolts, and that allows a little bit of wig wiggle room to help you line up the bolts when you're installing them. Next, I use my drill to drill out the factory holes so that they're large enough to accept the riv nuts, and I did that in all of the beams. Then I use this little deep burring tool to make sure that there aren't any burrs or sharp edges on those holes. And uh, I'll link to this in the description. It's a nice little thing to have because um, you're gonna be drilling a lot of holes in the van. And I think it was about $10. Then I sprayed a little Rust-Oleum in all the holes to uh, cover up those raw edges of metal and to make sure that there's no rust. Then I just use my rib nut tool to install the rib nuts. If you don't have one of these, they're pretty inexpensive and I'll link to this one in the description. I really like it. It works really well and it's easy to use and I think it's a great way to attach things to the van. Much better than using self-tapping sheet metal screws. Then before applying any adhesive, I just put them up in place and make sure that all the holes line up and they do. That means I'm ready to glue it in. And like I said, I use that um, Loctite Marine adhesive. And I like to do a dollop of the adhesive because the beam is uneven and that way it kind of squishes up when you screw the furring strip in. I screwed that one in tight and then I went ahead and installed the other ones. And that's it. I've got all the furring strips in. On this side, I'm going to have upper cabinets, and so I didn't put any furring strips because I'll just be attaching them to the ceiling. Uh, you want to make sure you have them everywhere that you're going to be attaching anything. I'm going to be doing shiplap. If you're going to be using something like quarter inch birch board to cover your walls, you probably don't need as many furring strips. But because I'm doing shiplap, I need to be able to think through and make sure I have points to attach every piece of shiplap. So hopefully this video helped you in determining how you're going to frame out your van and we'll see you in the next video.